Physics motion diagram is going to be the topic of this lesson. We're going to go through position versus time and velocity versus time and compare and contrast. The fact that there's both of these different diagrams and they tell you different things, even though they're similar, uh, makes it a little bit confusing. If there was just one graph or the other, it wouldn't be so bad. And then we'll spend just a little tiny bit of time also talking about acceleration versus time as well. My name is Chad and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. All right, now we're gonna start with a graph of position versus time. When we plot position on the y-axis, even though it's x, I realize, it's position on the y-axis, time on the x-axis. So if you recall that the slope of a graph is equal to rise over run, it's equal to the change in y over the change in x, which in this case corresponds to the change in x over the change in t, the change in time. And so the slope here is equal to the change in x over the change in t, the displacement over time, that is what velocity is. And so when you see a position versus time graph, right off the top of your head, you should be thinking, oh, the slope tells me the velocity. So, and then second, the area doesn't tell me anything. You're like, uh, okay, well, when we get to velocity versus time, you're gonna find out that both the slope and the area are gonna tell us something. But with position versus time, the slope does give us velocity and the area under the curve gives us nothing. All right, let's take a look at an example. All right, so this is the motion diagram for position versus time that we're gonna take a look at. So we're gonna answer a few questions on it, but before we get there, I just wanna take a look at what we're actually looking at on this graph. And the big thing to remember here is that the y-axis here is position. It gives us the position at any point in time. If I said, what's the position at t equals zero? Well, you'd say the position is also zero. If I said, what is the position at t equals two seconds? You'd go to t equals two seconds and you'd say the position is 10. If I said, what's the position at t equals seven seconds? You'd go all the way to seven seconds and you'd say the position is negative 10. The graph reads position on the y-axis. That's important to remember because when we get to the graph of velocity versus time, it doesn't read position, it reads velocity. And because there's two different graphs, it will start to get confusing. But if you've got position versus time, the y-axis reads position. All right, let's take a look here. So the first question is, what is the net displacement after eight seconds? Well, if we're looking for net displacement, displacement again is just from where you start to where you end up. And at t equals zero, we're starting right here at zero. And after eight seconds, we're ending up right at this place right here at five. And so in this case, from zero to five, that means your displacement is equal to five. Okay, not so bad. Let's take a look at the next question. All right, the second question we're gonna take a look at is where is the velocity positive, negative, and zero? All right, thing we have to remember again about a position versus time graph is that the slope is equal to the velocity. And again, your slope here is equal to your rise over your run. So delta x over delta t, which by definition is your velocity in this case. And it's important to remember because on position versus time, your slope is velocity. But when we get the velocity versus time graph, the slope will no longer equal velocity. The graph itself will be reading velocity on the y-axis. So super important to remember, this is not so bad when you get one, but once you get the two different major types of motion diagrams, position versus time and velocity versus time, remembering what the slope is equal to on each one and things of a sort will be super important. All right, but slope here is indeed velocity. And if I want first a positive velocity, well then I want a positive slope and that's gonna be an uphill slope. And we say that that happens here from t equals zero to t equals one second. And then the only other place it happens is way over here from t equals seven seconds to t equals eight seconds. Okay, next we wanna see, well, where's the slope, i.e. where's the velocity, I should say, negative. Again, now I want a downhill slope, a negative slope, and that's gonna occur here as well as here. So from t equals three seconds, to five seconds and then even more steep from t equals five seconds to six seconds. And what you should recognize is that not only is uh, the velocity negative in both places, but it's more steeply negative from five to six seconds. So it would be a larger negative number, a, I should say, larger magnitude negative number from t equals five seconds to six seconds than it was from t equals two seconds to five seconds. All right, and then finally, where is the slope equal to zero? So i.e. where is the velocity zero? Right there 
and right there from t equals one second to two seconds and t equals six seconds to seven seconds. Cool, and now we've identified where the velocity is positive, negative, and zero on a position versus time graph. And again, remember this will work out a little bit differently when we get to velocity versus time in a bit. All right, the next question is, what is the velocity at t equals 5.5 seconds? Well, at 5.5 seconds, we're right smack in the middle here. And again, if I'm looking for the velocity, well, then I'm looking for the slope. And what's convenient here is that the slope here, it's a straight line from t equals 5 seconds to 6 seconds. And it'll be a little easier if we just take the endpoints and use them to find the slope. And you might recall that slope is equal to change in y over change in x, which we often write as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that's kind of the approach I'm going to take here. And so if I go final and initial and make this x2, y2 and this x1, y1 be the way I want to go. And in this case, that's going to be, so y2 here is negative 10. And then y1 here is going to be at the zero point. And then x2 here is at t equals six seconds. So an x1 is here at five seconds. And so negative 10 all over six minus five is one. It's gonna get a slope of negative 10 and therefore a velocity of negative 10. In this case, the units are gonna be meters per second. Cool. And again, it's just simple calculation of slope. And if you forgot your formula for rise over run here to calculate slope, well, there you go. All right, so now we've got velocity versus time. And again, because there's a second graph that you might have to examine, this gets a little bit more challenging. If there was only one graph, you'd have no problem remembering what it told you. So, but again, on position versus time, the slope gave us velocity by definition. Rise over run was velocity. But now we have velocity versus time. And with velocity on the y-axis, it's the y-axis itself that gives us the velocity, not the slope. We'll find out now that the slope is gonna give us the acceleration. The rise, the change in velocity over the run, the change in time, that by definition is now acceleration. What we will find out though, there is a, a relationship here and it turns out we we derive this relationship through calculus. So we're not gonna need it for this algebra-based course, but uh, it turns out the area under the curve is gonna be equal to the displacement on this graph. Now on the position versus time graph, the area under the curve wasn't equal to anything. But here, the area under the curve will indeed equal displacement. That'll be important. And so there's two pieces of information that are valuable from this velocity versus time graph. The slope, which is equal to acceleration, and the area under the curve, which is equal to displacement. Let's take a look. All right, so now we've got a plot of velocity versus time instead. So the, the plot should look pretty much near identical to what we just had, except what's been plotted on the y-axis is now different. And so if I said, hey, what's the velocity at t equals one second? You look and you'd say, velocity is 10 meters per second because that's what the y-axis reads now. If I said, what is the position at t equals, I should say, uh, what is the displacement after one second or what is the position at t equals one second? And you should say, oh, Chad, that's gonna take me a little time to figure out, sorry. And we'd have to figure out displacement, which is related to area under the curve and, and all this stuff, but it wouldn't immediately be obvious. So on position versus time, we know the position at any point in time, that's what the graph tells us. But on velocity versus time, we don't actually necessarily know the position at any point in time without a little bit of calculation. What we do know is the velocity at any point in time. At t equals one, the velocity is 10 meters per second. At t equals five, the velocity is zero. At t equals eight, the velocity is five meters per second. That's what a velocity versus time graph gives us. It's not related to the slope at all now. Keep in mind, the graph simply reads velocity on the y-axis. All right, so the question is, where is the velocity positive, negative, and zero? And again, the thing you have to remember again is that it's not about the slope now, it's about the y-axis itself. And if I want a positive velocity, well then I just want a positive velocity on the y-axis. If I want a negative velocity, well then I just want a negative value on the y-axis. And if I want a velocity that's equal to zero, then I wanna be right on the zero line on the y-axis. That's kind of the deal. And so the velocity is positive here and here and here, until we get right to that point, and at that point, and that point alone right there so far, and I guess technically right at the beginning as well, that's where the velocities were zero. And then everywhere below the x-axis here, so is gonna be a negative value for velocity, till we get right to that point, and that's where it's zero again, and then we go back to having positive values of velocity. So if we take a look at what's going on here, 
we're moving forward. So, and we're getting up to a certain velocity. And then we're staying and maintaining that velocity of 10 meters per second. And so a lot of students make the mistake of saying, oh, we got a, a horizontal line right here. That means we're not moving anymore. No, no, no. It means we're moving at a constant velocity now. And so the slope, again, is not equal to velocity anymore. The entire y-axis is what reads velocity. And so we can see that from time zero to time one second, we are actually getting an increasing velocity, which means we're undergoing an acceleration. So the slope now equals acceleration. Slope equals delta v over delta t. So we're accelerating from t equals, one, uh, t equals zero to t equals one second. And then we're maintaining that constant velocity of 10 meters per second. We're still definitely moving. So, and then we're slowing down till we come to a stop ever instantaneously right at t equals five seconds. And then we actually go in the reverse direction. We start backing up. So, and our velocity becomes negative till it reaches negative 10 meters per second at t equals six seconds. And we maintain that negative 10 meters per second velocity for a full second from t equals six to t equals seven seconds. So, and then that negative velocity starts slowing down, slowing down, slowing down until it comes to a stop. And then we change direction and start going in the forward direction again. So past that like, uh, I don't know, t equals seven and two thirds seconds. So that's what's going on here in terms of velocity. So everywhere above the x-axis, positive y values, that's positive velocity. Everywhere below the x-axis, negative y values, that's negative velocity. And anywhere right along that x-axis, so is where we have a velocity equal to zero. All right, so now we've got where is the acceleration positive, negative, and zero. And again, velocity versus time, your slope gives you the acceleration. Your slope, again, is rise over run, and your rise is your change in velocity. Your run is the change in time, and change in velocity over change in time, that's the definition of acceleration. And so now if we're being asked about the acceleration, that's where we wanna pay attention to the slope. And so if I want a positive acceleration, I want a positive slope, an uphill slope. And that's gonna be a positive acceleration from t equals zero to t equals one second, and then again, a positive acceleration from t equals seven to t equals eight seconds, and that's it. All right, what if about a negative acceleration? Well, now again, I want a negative slope, a downhill slope. So, and we're gonna have a negative acceleration from t equals two seconds to five seconds, and then an even more negative acceleration from t equals five seconds to t equals six seconds. So, and then finally, a value of zero for acceleration, and again, that we want a zero slope, a horizontal line, and that's gonna happen right here from t equals one to two seconds, and again, right here from t equals six to seven seconds. Cool. So velocity, again, the y-axis reads velocity, but it's uh, the slope that is equal to acceleration on a curve here with velocity versus time. All right, next question is, what is the acceleration at t equals three seconds? Well, we see it. t equals three seconds is right here on the graph. And again, you're supposed to think, oh, velocity versus time, the acceleration is equal to the slope. So what they really want you to do is calculate the slope here. And again, it's a nice long straight line, and the initial point here and the final point here we can use to find the slope of that entire line as a constant slope for a line, right? And in this case, we'll do the same kind of thing we did before, where slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to calculate that rise over run. And in this case, the final y point is zero. So the final, I'm sorry, the initial y point was 10. So the, the final x point is five. The initial x point was two. And we can see here zero minus 10 is negative 10 and five minus two is three. So we're gonna get negative 10 thirds. And that's our acceleration. That's in units of meters per second squared. You could also then you know, turn, turn this into a, 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 from an improper fraction to a mixed number like negative three and a third meters per second squared or a decimal negative 3.33 meters per second squared. Anything of that sort. Cool, and again, key is just remembering that again, velocity versus time, automatically think, oh, slope equals acceleration. So if they're asking me acceleration, I need that slope. So the next question is asking us for the net displacement from t equals zero to t equals six seconds. And what we've gotta remember is that on a velocity versus time curve, the net displacement is equal to the area under the curve. And again, on a position versus time graph, the area doesn't mean anything. But on velocity versus time, the area under the curve is what gives you the displacement. Now, if we take a look here from t equals zero to t equals five seconds, the area under the curve is above the x-axis. That would correspond to positive area 
if you will, and positive displacement. Now, once we go from t equals five to somewhere between t equals seven and eight seconds, so we got area below the curve and that's negative displacement. And then we got this one little tiny region right here, once again, uh, that's above the x axis and is therefore gonna be positive displacement. So, cool. You gotta keep that in mind, which side of the x axis you're on and stuff like this. Now, one thing to note, we could take a look at this whole entire graph and say, yeah, it looks like there's more positive displacement than negative displacements overall, we expect positive placement overall from zero to eight seconds. Well, this question is just dealing with from zero to six seconds, and definitely from zero to five seconds, it's all positive displacement. Now you can try and add up squares and things of a sort and approximate it, uh, or you can kind of make shapes you can get the area of. So like here we have a rectangle, here we have a triangle, and then here we have a triangle, and area of a rectangle is length times width. Area of a triangle is one half base times height, and that's how we'll figure those out. Now down below here, we've got uh, just from uh, five to six seconds, it's just this portion right here. It's that lovely little triangle, that's it. And we'll add the positive part and the negative part, keeping in, in mind the signs, to get the overall net displacement. So if we take a look here, so for this triangle right here, we've got a height, uh, and I should say triangle, I'm gonna go with the rectangle first. We've got a height of 10, so, and we've got a width of one second. And so 10 times one is gonna give us an area of positive 10. And if you notice, this triangle is half of that same analogous similar rectangle. That's why it's one half base times height, one half of one times 10, and that's why it's just gonna be an area of five. And then this triangle right here is half of this big rectangle right here. And this big rectangle would have a base of three seconds and a height also of 10. Three times 10 is 30, but we're only half of that rectangle, so we're only 15. Cool, and that's gonna give us a total positive area here. 15 plus 10 is 25 plus five is positive 30. Now down below here in this little rectangle, so we've got a base of one and a height now of also 10 as far as absolute value goes. So, and to get that area of that triangle, one times 10 times a half, it's gonna get us an area of five. And again, that's a total area of technically negative five being uh, below the x-axis here. And so we add those together, we're gonna get a net displacement of positive 30 and negative five. And so your net displacement is gonna be positive 25, and in this case, positive 25 meters. Now in the first lesson on displacement, velocity, and acceleration, we actually introduced some very simplistic plots of both position versus time and velocity versus time, and talked about some different things. We never actually did present acceleration versus time though, so I just wanted you to see this. You're much less likely to see this than those other two, but there's still a chance. So if we take a look here, acceleration versus time, so again, you're probably not gonna have to do anything calculation-wise on this, but you should recognize some trends here. So uh, if you look at this first one, the acceleration is equal to zero. So your acceleration, again, acceleration versus time, the y-axis is reading acceleration. And so if you're right along the zero point all the way across, that's when your acceleration is zero. However, this next one here, your acceleration is a constant value, but it's not zero. It's a non-zero acceleration, but it's a constant in this case. And a constant acceleration, another word for that is uniform acceleration. And so whether you've said uniform acceleration or constant acceleration, and maybe we say uniform non-zero acceleration, same diff. All right, and this last one here, so the slope on this graph is not anything related to what you need to know. It turns out it's equal to the rate of change of the acceleration, which is nothing you're ever gonna take a look at. So, but what you do see here is that the acceleration is not constant anymore. The acceleration is increasing over time. And so this is a varying acceleration or a non-uniform or non-constant acceleration. And again, we never deal with these mathematically in calculations and stuff like that. Now, if you're in a calculus-based physics class, maybe there's a chance you might see something like that, uh, in a, like a problem dealing with springs or something like that, which have a variable force or something. So, but for an algebra-based physics class, you're never gonna have to deal with a calculation involving a varying acceleration. Again, you might have to recognize this lovely graph of acceleration versus time represents having a varying acceleration, but no calculations involving it whatsoever. Now, if you've liked this lesson and found it helpful, then like the video. Happy studying.